I'm John Ruggiero, and welcome to this episode of New Jersey Paranormal. With me, as always, is my teammate Chris, and our special guest for today is the chakra doctor, Bonnie Edwards. Hello. Bonnie, hi. Thanks for, thanks being, for being here. here. Thank you for so having me. So this show is about auras. Now, everybody knows I'm kind of a skeptic when it comes to a lot of this kind of thing. Um, we've had readers before at a lot of our different events. Auras was always one that kind of stuck out to me because I didn't really know what it was and what it involved. So why don't you tell us first, what is an aura? Well, for an aura, if you think about it, the aura is just the energy that emits around you, a plant, an animal. And you can usually experience someone's aura by walking up to them because if someone's in a real bad mood, you're going to know before they turn around by the energy that comes off of them. So that's your aura. And it kind of speaks to, your aura speaks to others, others speak to you, you know, when you walk into a room, you're standing there, you feel somebody staring at you. 99% of the time when you turn around, they are. But the energy talks first and that's your aura. And the aura is created by your chakras. So I don't know how familiar you guys are with the chakras, but there's the seven systems. You goes up your body. And then as the health of those chakras and what's going on in your emotional, your physical and your spiritual life, keeps your chakras moving, but also creates the energy or aura around you. So there's you. different chakras, chakras control different yes. things? Yes, or? So when you have the, like the root chakra, and the root chakra is located between your legs, and that's really governing, you know, what you, how do you go about your day, your religion, your traditions, and all those things. So when your home base is off, or you feel a little lost in the world or something, your root chakra, you're going to really have a lot of issues going on there. and. If you don't settle them or try to balance your chakras, you end up you can end up with physical issues eventually, which could, you know, definitely in the root or lower chakras, the sacral or the power center, those could be from reproductive issues. They could be, um, you know, anything in your ovaries, anything in um, even in your, you know, elimination system when those type of chakras are out of balance. Where like, you know, if you have a throat chakra out of balance, which is always located right here, you may end up with thyroid issues, you may always have a sore throat, you may always be coughing because you're not either not speaking your truth or you just run around with verbal diarrhea and people <laughs> wish you would shut up. So it's either or, so you got to decide which one it's going to be. And the most um, common one that everybody knows is your third eye. So, you know, when you're driving down the road and GPS goes, take a left, but you know you're supposed to take a right. That's your intuition, That's your third much eye. every time we drive together. Yeah. Is she the intuition GPS or the GPS? Or <laughs> calls me CPS, CPS tells me another instead way. of GPS. That's another story. That's so cute. so like you're basically, your aura is your energy bubble? Mm-hmm. Perfect. It, just the bubble around you that, that kind of emits your physical and emotional spiritual health. And the system, the aura imaging system, picks that up through your sweat glands, through the body temperature, and a little bit of electric shock to kind of... You know, do we have like any it? idea where this originated from? Or in the very, very beginning, we'll talk about a guy named Leadbeater who started to say that he knew that there was auras and started creating some systems to try to do it. But really, Guy Coggins is the really founder behind aura imaging, aura photography. Like he's the most well-known one for it, and you know, still is in full operation in California. How did he? I mean, was it something he stumbled upon by accident, or well, he took up from Curlian. So if you remember the old Curlian camera, if you've ever had one, you go in, you put your hand on a sensor, and this box takes a picture, and then you get this really weird computer generator, generated report, and then, you know, some colors around you. Very cool, but kind of rudiment. Like, what does it mean that you didn't tell you it says yellow is intelligent, and orange is creative, and blue is calm, and, and you went home going, yay. Where he thinks white, it means he's angelic. We did not say angelic. We said that oh, we're going to get to that in, right. in, in yeah. a little while because we did have a reading done on the two of us. Take us through the process. So, someone comes to you, they want their aura red. Um, how does that work through how you do it to what the colors mean? Take us through the whole gambit there. So what I do is I'd have you come down and obviously take off you know any jewelry on the left hand, and I'm gonna have you sit down. I put a wristband that has some sensors on it, and then I have a hand plate that you put your hand on. And then you're, and I have a little camera that picks up your image, and then once you put your hand on, it starts to calibrate. What's the hand thing for? The hand sensor picks up your sweat glands, okay. your temperature, your pulse rate, 
and so also sensors on the wrist as well. Also, I mean, yes, okay. both. So it's kind of reading it from both places to okay. try to get the best reading. And what Guy Coggins did to get this imaging to kind of come to fruition was he used actual people and psychics who said they can see auras. Okay. So they all kind of come to an agreement, you know, that this is color that they're seeing in general, okay. everybody, to kind of create his system. But you don't need that ability to do a reading like you don't claim to see no colors that's that. why i bought this fancy okay. machine so you do the science yeah. side of it right. yes yeah, so i really you know i love i know when i know when my chakra's out of balance you know how difficult the day can be when you go through it so i was so intrigued by it but my first experience was a curly and photo and i went home to my husband i'm like they said i'm intelligent and he goes how much did that cost you and I'm, he goes <laughs> you know because i could tell you you know you're smart you know you didn't need a picture but i'm so intrigued by it so then, I, you know, I'm into Reiki, I'm into energy, I'm into energy healing, hands-on healing. And then when I really started to understand the chakras and how important they were in your life, I came across this, or I started doing research, I came across the aura imaging, and then... You found your niche. I did. So, so you have your hand on the machine, you have the sensors on your wrist. I saw that was our end. What are you seeing on your end during... So now, it's like a bunch of... Kind of, I don't want to call it bells and whistles, but there's graphs and there's charts, and then there, you, your image appears, and then the colors start to generate around you. Okay. So I usually wait, you know, I have you kind of calm down, take breaths so that the energy slows down, because at first it's kind of jumping all over and it's changing colors, but once it'll slow down, then I go ahead and snap it, and that kind of takes a picture of your energy okay. at that, I mean, really at that moment. And then from then, the the program runs some kind of analysis based on the all different of colors your, and the different... All of your, you know, your sweat, your temperature and all that goes in and then it creates a report and it shows your, you know, how you split your mind, body, spirit. It shows you what chakras are, have like a high energy, some that have low or now, maybe stagnant. is that based stagnant. more on the color or the energy reading? That part is based on the amount of energy emitting from okay. your body. Where the colors is not the amount of energy, it's really the colors I believe have to do with the health of your chakras okay. or what's going on in there. That's what's going to be going on. So if you're really emotionally struggling and having a really hard time, your aura is going to be very much closer to you and it's going to be maybe a, a murkier color than a bright and happy, you know, expansive energy. So it just depends on the the, the state. I always could like the state of your union. Yeah, because you know? I just didn't know. I didn't know, again, looking at the report, it is an extensive report. I didn't know if that was based on the energy you're getting from the sensors or your, or is the program in you are just reading what you see in the colors in the different areas. You're telling me it's kind of both, right? It's both. So I do a, a personal reading off of the colors because, you know, I've done hundreds and hundreds of them and sometimes the colors for you and the colors for you right. can be different, but the system itself creates all that other, the mind, body, spirit, kind of what planet you're resonating with now, how, how your volume and frequency of your energy, whether you could teach a class or whether you need to be one-on-one -on -one with people or whether you could be a wallflower or whether you walk in, you know, the party you don't start till I walk in, you know, that kind of person. So that's how your energy works with everybody. So we're going to show the, the Starman pictures of, of you oh. and I from our reading later, not, oh, not yeah. right now. And we can go over a little more of the colors. But one of the questions that, that we had was... Can you be affected by somebody else's aura? Because we were even talking about that before we went, we started Absolutely. filming. Absolutely. So, you know, the easiest way I do to explain to people is like, you know, if you've ever had your heart broke, you know, you get that wrenching in your heart. That's not really your heart wrenching, but that's your chakra. The pit in your stomach. The pit in your stomach, you know, or, you know, you feel like, you know, you, you just, you know, always have to go to the bath, nervous stomach, or those are your chakras reacting to what's going on around you. So if you're having a nervous feeling. What color is that, the stomach thing? Because I, I get it. Is that brown, that color? That, no, no. The, so it's not your actual <laughs> organ heart that, that's failing it. It's like you said, it's that energy. It's, it's that the chakra. energy that happens or when your heart's really happy and you just feel so like, oh, I'm so happy and everything's so great. You, you feel that. And when you walk into a room, other people feel that. Yeah. And then, you know, like you said, if the boss calls and said you've done something wrong and we're going to have to talk and you get that sick feeling in your stomach, that's your chakra just like, you know, somebody's about to affect my power So center. the aura is always 
could be in flux depending on your emotional state. Your aura is always in flux. Right. I would say your overall color, you know, if you, you there's in the report, it kind of shows your overall color and that really stays the same. Is that kind of your personality? Your base? It's kind of like your personality and that stays the same unless you have some major life issue. Like you had a divorce, you had a marriage, you had a child, you had a loss. And you know, when we go through things like that, then your aura color could change. Because you may be in a time of great healing, you know, and that would be more in the blues and the whites and the violets. Or you might be in a time where you're just very busy and very intense and everything. And then your color is going to be really more red. In All right, your I overall. got a quick question then, because we're talking about if you're being affected by, like, you know, just normal everyday stuff. But what if you have someone that comes into your your space that is not a good person? Well, you're going to feel that because. That they're going to appear to you as I call them energy suckers. So like, you know, you kind of like you see them coming down the hall and you're kind of oh, don't make eye contact because you know that they're maybe going to keep you chatting for 45, 50 minutes about nothing. So they you feel that aura before it even reaches. You. Yeah. So and you, you may already pr have prior knowledge of what they're going to do, but they don't mind sucking the energy out of you. They don't mind. They could see you on your way to the hospital for emergency, but they're gonna be, but, but let me tell you all about this first. And they will just, and they don't care. And you'll feel it every time. Or if someone's very needy or someone just constantly can't figure out their own life and they're constantly pulling on you, that's an energy extraction from you. And if gotcha. we could see, if we could sit and with our hands hooked up to the sensors all the time, I believe you could actually see the struggle. No, we talk about like sixth sense, you know, and like just, you know, premonitions or feelings. When let's just say you're in a you're in a uh, a group of people, and you just what you're you're just walking like say through the mall, and then all of a sudden you just you just feel like something around you is not good. Negative. Is that yeah? You're talking about like conflicting auras. Is that what you're talking? Maybe about? not conflicting, but some like when you you know like when you you just meet someone for the first time and you just get a bad feeling about that person. Can it be the same thing without seeing a person, but he's in your your aura, your your space that you can feel? His as long as they come, they're coming into your space. You're definitely going to feel it. Okay. And especially the more sensitive, like when they talk about people who are empathic, you know, you feel people's feelings. So you could go into a room and be happy and sad and mad and, and, and you're experiencing everybody's energies. So yes, if somebody is negative and they're walking up into your space, it's going to change your everything right away too. Because you're, you know, well, you're going to bristle. Well, let's talk about the that. colors because the colors weren't really, whenever I heard about auras, I, I thought it was all about the colors. Um, are there good colors, bad colors? Like, would Mother Teresa be golden and, and white and Hitler be black or blood red? I mean, is there colors that you look at and go, okay, this person's sort of got a, a bad way about them. They're negative, they're mean. Is there something where you could tell just looking at the basic colors? Well, let's use, just use Hitler and Mother Teresa as a, as a great example. So first of all, you got to remember Hitler was a very bad person, but millions of people told him he was doing a great thing. Right. So in the energy world, I don't know if you would see it that way. What I would expect to see on Hitler is very, very, very small chakras and a very small aura. Now, in his thoughts and minds, he's thinking he's doing a great thing, so he might be producing some colors but I expect his chakras to be very tiny so, and very but, close. But like I said, could you tell just by, if you didn't even know the person, they put their hand on the machine, the wrist and So like the if sensor, I got Hitler sat and, down, I didn't know it was or, Hitler. Or whoever, or, some, some person who was really a bad person, just all around bad, would you be able to look at their chakra and go, oh boy, this person at this moment is giving off nothing but negative or mean just based on what you're looking at color wise i can't lie it's hard to tell okay. because i That's had what i was curious about one two different times i had somebody who was very sick had a death diagnosis and then i also had uh, somebody who was a close person in my life that i was able to see why their aura actually turned up very black around them and i never really saw that but as i see the life it's it's the energy around them. It's not them. Okay, it's that's what the, I was that's what I was saying. Yeah. I didn't know if they just give off yeah, the and, bad and, and color or the good the color. color. It was it was all around this person and permitting through all of her energy or chakras and everything, but it wasn't her right. wasn't the bad person, but she was so uh, controlled and surrounded by it that she couldn't even her own colors wouldn't even show. 
Yeah, she was overshadowed. She was overshadowed by this darkness of someone else's bad energy. How do you handle that? Like when you have um, a reading with someone like that, how do you how do you talk to them or even? Well, I have a chart, and I you know I back into it. So I, I hand them the chart, and it talks about spiritual imbalances, physical imbalances, emotional imbalances from depression to whatever, and I have them look in, and see. Can you see any of these things you may be suffering okay. from? and then have them back it into the chakra. And so instead of me telling you this chakra is all messed up and, and these are the things that are gonna be wrong with you, why don't you look and see if any of these things are wrong with you? You empower them, you give them yeah. the option of. Yeah, I don't wanna you know, talk about, you know, so how's your prostate today? Cause I bet it's not doing well. You know, I, I, you don't, cause it's, and when you're at a metaphysical fair, it, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be entertaining. It's supposed to be, so I really try hard not to, focus on it but if i do see something i'm i feel professional and responsible enough to you know kind of urge them to look at the chart and just say do you suffer from any of these things and and if you do take this home and just kind of back it into the chakra and that's where you're going to want to do the work so you're just kind of offering guidance based on what you see in the report and and the colors yes yeah i mean that's again the one of the things that like she talked about being able to read good people bad people um even when it comes to couples we, um, I thought that was really interesting, the, the experience that we went through with you. Again, I'm not a big believer when it comes to a lot of the different things, and I was hesitant to do the <laughs> whole process, mostly because I was nervous about what, what it would say as far as the colors and everything. Your deep, dark uh, yeah, secrets. I'm thinking, like, what is this yeah. thing going to read? And we talked about the colors and good people, bad people. I'm thinking, like, is there, you know, this blood red, black color that's going to show on one side and then you know maybe some good stuff somewhere else so when we talked about doing it we went somewhere neutral we um we both had our own individual reading um i thought the process was very interesting going through it of course i let chris go through it first because i wanted to see <laughs> what it was like with some commentary and hers wasn't that great so i didn't think it would be that hard to beat <laughs> so i was feeling a little confident after that competitive so, are we a little bit so um i'm gonna we're going to show the what you call the the star man. Mm -hmm. Is that what you refer the to? The star it man as? shows your front and the back chakras, so it'll show the the legs so, pointing out, and so you can see the front and the back where how the colors are going all around your body. So this is one of many pictures the and views, reports that yes. you get, and on we know your who side, you, I know who you are. Well, I just I, want to I, explain. <laughs> your side is me. Okay. This side here is me. Right over here. This side here is Chris. Notice, if you will. The angelic white colors mm -hmm. on my side mm -hmm. that Chris doesn't have. Well, for, I just want to point reason. out to you though that these are things you're not actually experiencing much right now as you will in the future because these are the colors that are coming in. So you have some work to do to. Uh, well, let's go through it because I read that as angelic. You you're saying it's something different. So let's compare in the color scheme here. What are you looking at when you All see? All right, well, let's just start from my, here. So when, here. when you look over here, you see a lot of red. And right. then when you look over here at crystals, you have a lot of green. So when somebody walks up on you, they feel an intenseness about you. You're busy, you're nah, so be quick, talk quick, move on. You walk up to Chris, you're like, oh, hey, how's the kids? How's the family? Does, you. you her energy is very gentle to come up to, and not that you're not a nice person, but you're intense. Right. So you, what you're putting out is very intense. What you're going to mo be moving into is a more overall easy, like I s explained to you with the white, when you have white in your aura, you're able to deal with every kind of person, every kind of energy, every kind of issue. So you're not there yet. <laughs> I'm 51 and I've only reached that color? How yeah, much so, more time it's, do I have but it, here? But it's definitely coming for you. But you know, if, because I know you guys are a couple, which was so fun for me to read you as a couple, Chris is the going to be the calming effect in, in your, your newfound uh, socialism or socialization or however you want to call it. And then you see um, you have a lot of green in here. So I would suggest right now, especially in this area of the body, you're going through some healing and some changes in this area where you see Chris has that red running down there. Right, right. I'm going to say that you have just like a bunch of passionate energy just burning up your, your, your chakra cord because it runs from the bottom all the way out the top, you know, to divine mm -hmm. down to earth core. So you see you have a very specific red energy running up the middle and you do too so that that makes me but hers goes down even a little farther so 
maybe a little more grounded than you are sometimes. So that's what that means when the, the blue goes straight down, whereas I have kind of well, now the angelic white. The angelic going, white for you is really saying you're really becoming into your own. See? You're really coming into good. You are really coming into your own now. Not always, but you're still very intense. You're still very, very intense. And I believe if I remember from the reading, Chris has white in there too, but it's overshadowed by her creative intuition. Okay. I mean, it really, she does have it too. I mean, I'm so, I'm so involved with fixing his intensity. <laughs> well, you are going to be the calming force when all this comes, because the more you come into yourself and you're able to deal with all different entities, the busier you're going to be and the more sought after you're going to be. Because when you're, you know, able to, when you're approachable and you're, you guys are doing such cool things here, so people are going to feel more able to just walk up and take up your time. So I hope you're ready for that. So if you had to pick Bonnie, wouldn't you rather be the one near you? <laughs> <laughs> That's the better one. Well, if if it's your show, John, Thank then you. yes. That's it. Let's, let's stop right there. All right. If it's your show, then yes, this will be I, the better. I did think the process was interesting. Um, it was about 18 minutes. I'm sure it was a shorter reading that you do. You do offer how long are the readings. So if somebody comes to you, is there a normal set It time usually frame? takes about 30 minutes. And usually if there's nobody, you know, beating me on the back of the head, it could be an hour because I could talk about it like all day. And back to your little charts, just some interesting about being a couple reading was the mind, body, spirit chart where yours was just like almost 80% physical. You're out running around and yours was like 92% mental. So for your couple, you know, you're thinking about it and you're well, doing sure. it. Exactly. We balance each uh, other, you, I think. You validated that for me that that's true. And we talked about that. The world needs worker bees, and then the world needs people to <laughs> yes, create things. And, uh, you know, so. No, the world needs the thinkers perfect. and the doers. That's right. Yes. <laughs> There's a place for all of us. Was that the first time you had done a couple and kind of like? I'm sure I've done couples before, but I didn't know it. So when we were at the expos, and the, uh, not as many men come as the women do, but if the wife comes, she can usually get her husband. But I don't always know that they're a couple. So that was really great to just know for sure that I'm reading a couple and the differences in your energy was great. And what was cool for me is that, like what you just said, I do feel like we're compatible in a, in a lot of ways, but we are sort of the yin and the yang in a lot of ways where I can come off overbearing and I have my faults, but she makes up for a lot of that in being the approachable, kind person that she is. So, I mean, it was cool to see that when you were going through the readings and kind of going over everything, a lot of it sort of was kind of you were hitting on things and, and that I you was. weren't aware of because well, you know me I'm, more than you know John. Right, I, I know really you more. I've dealt more with you. I see you running around the expo. I'm like, oh boy, if I don't need nothing, you know, we better let John just be busy and do his thing. But I know you're, you know, a super nice person. But the first thing people experience in your energy is your intensity. Right. So if you don't want that to be the first thing, you know, you'll be integrated. Because his, okay his mind's always going. Going, thinking, That's moving what it on is. to the next project, right. you know. So, but, you know, like I said, I, you know, I know you both now, and I know you're a nice person, but people experience your intensity, so you'll have to, you know, work harder. See, to they, might, they might misread him because yes, of yes. it. That's what I think, yes. and I think that does happen sometimes, and they're surprised when sure they get to know you sure angelic, godlike? <laughs> Okay, just check. Maybe that's me affecting All your right. aura. But so, re real quick, though, I wanted her to really quick tell us that cute thing you told us about doing a reading on your daughter. Okay, so the last expo I was with these guys were setting up, and my daughter's always come to help. They run the front desk for me. So my daughter's like, oh, I'll be your example today because she likes to get on the aura every now and then. So she had this huge amount of energy in her sacral chakra, which is your sex chakra, your reproductive, it governors all that. And I'm like, wow. That's like a lot of energy there. You know, I know she has a high libido, so I was like, whatever. But all day, I'm just like, wow, that's a lot of energy. Well, two days later, she sits me down in the living room and in informs me that she's pregnant. <laughs> so it all made sense to me. And she knew when I was doing the reading that she was pregnant, but I did not know. Wow. So I learned something about what that looks like in an aura reading now. So I did learn it first. In the aura. So that was an aha moment for you. Yes, it was. I was like, oh, the aura reading. Now I know. And she was like, yes. So she got that a really hard time keeping a straight face when you were talking about so all that. So she knew. She knew. She knew. She knew. And then when she knew what I was saying, 
she knew what I was saying when I even I didn't know. Like you said, sometimes I'm saying stuff I don't even know what I'm saying. You but just thought she was just a busy girl. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So you've been doing this for how long? No? About 17 years wow. now. Yeah. So this is my passion. I have, you know, I work and everything, but this is my passion child. I spend a lot of time. I have a garage full of books. I study any energy auras, energy healing, how to heal yourself, things like that. I'm just, that's my passion child. Right. So there. you, I know you come to our convention. How else would somebody, do you do other conventions? Do you do private, private readings? How do people... Well, I do do more of, I've been with you guys for a few years right. now and I've been, you know, kind of keeping on the down, but lately I've been doing it at yoga studios because okay. a lot of people, that's the right people that want to know about their chakras and their energy and healing. So usually I, I will contact local yoga studios and then we set up a date and then there are people. No, I know with us, you, you set up that big tent. Do you do that? No. Okay. I only I, do I, that. I don't know if that was normal or not. Like, did you bring it this is normal. tent to everywhere you go? <laughs> no, I do that because the overhead lights mess with the, like, especially the fluorescent lighting okay. messes with the system colors. So I always bring the tent to expos for that you reason. you want truer colors so when you're So it is basically someone just sitting there like, like we did. I mean, yes. the process is pretty simple for the person. It's painless. You, you yeah. just sit there and she tells you to breathe. Mm -hmm. Takes a couple of minutes mm -hmm. for her to get all the readings and then she prints out the report and she goes over it line for line with you pretty much. Mm -hmm. Well, it's and printing, so we're not wasting time. We're reading, it's printing. and They get to keep the report as well, right? They so get, they have it mm -hmm. to home. So again, I thought it was something different. I do recommend it, especially couples was kind of interesting for me because it did hit on it, you know, pretty much I hope that's everything. something you start to offer. Yes, yes, I will now that I saw how fun it was to do it with a couple. And it was fun for us. I'm going to research that white color again because I think you Okay, well, you'll have that, to get back to me about, you know, if you find some more godlike <laughs> I think it's in there. Maybe the, the fine print on the bottom somewhere. It's in there. But um, how do people reach you? Facebook or website? Definitely, you know, I always go with that chakra-doctor.com. Okay. Just go there. I have examples of different auras, what they mean, you know, how to contact me. And if you want, I do do private parties. So if you have, a, you know, five friends and you want me to come over, I'll come over to your house. I'll I set up. That'd be really cool. We do that. I always say, you know, no alcohol. No, don't do anything until you've had your aura. Because if you do, you know, drink or do any kind a of. A yellow shopper there. Uh, no, it actually, everybody turns pink. Okay. Everybody turns pink when they've, uh, you know, drank oh. alcohol or smoked or did That's any different. kind of alt mind alter. They so just you, pink. So you do You're private in, parties, you do mm -hmm. different events, mm -hmm. and you'll do uh, private readings as well, right? Someone yes. can come to you for a, a private reading. Sure, yes. Okay. So, Bonnie, great having you here. Um, you're at the Expo every year. We love having you there at she the Psychic Fair as well. Yeah. Um, I'll be there on March 7th. Thanks again for everything. Thanks Thank for the reading. Thank you. Thank you for watching this episode of New Jersey Paranormal. We'll see you next time.